Hey guys, this PCB here is for an AM radio circuit, but there is something a little bit different about it, and that's because it's based on vacuum tubes. Because a few weeks ago, I've been working with some vacuum tubes for a preamplifier circuit, and I really like the results. So that's why I searched for some more vacuum tubes and interesting circuits, and I found this one, for a radio. So today I'll try to explain you how this circuit works, the parts of such a radio, and also test it out, and maybe listen to some AM radio channels. So if you want to learn something new and also interesting, and if you want to see if this works, stick till the end. Because I will share with you my circuit, this PCB that I've designed, and everything that you need in the description, just in case that you want to make the same project. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. I searched online for a few schematics for a vacuum tube radio and I found this one. The quality of this was very bad, so I've made my own schematic using a PCB designing software and this is my final schematic. And once I had this schematic, which by the way we'll take a look over in a few minutes, I've passed this circuit to a PCB and this is my final board right here. And if you want to use the same design, download the Gerber files from below, and then you go to PCBWay.com, which is the sponsor of this video. And here you click the Code Now button, and then you can select your settings such as the size of the PCB, the quantity that you want, the thickness, the color of the solder mask, and so on. In my case I select the black color, and click Save to Cart. And on the next page we upload the Gerber files that you have just downloaded from my website. Then you make the payment and receive the PCBs in just a few days. The order process is very easy. So this is my PCB for this project, and PCBWay did an awesome job. It looks quite nice, and it has spaces for two vacuum tubes, some coils, also a switch, the transformer and all the needed components. I've also placed some LEDs below the tubes, in case that you want to give some color to this project. You have the values that I've used on the silk layer, but I might change them till the end of this video, so check the final schematic. This project is quite new to me, so I might encounter some problems. Anyway, before we assemble the PCB, let's understand the schematic. We can divide this circuit in two main parts. The first one is the so-called regenerative receiver. It is made out of some coils, a potentiometer, capacitors and is connected to the input of the first vacuum tube. And this entire part would oscillate and resonate at a specific frequency. And connected to these coils we have a variable capacitor like this one. So by changing this capacitance we change the resonating point. So basically that's how we tune into other channels of the AM spectrum. And here we can also find a potentiometer which is also used to change the values of the oscillating part and tune into different frequencies. Ok, so between the first part and the second part we have a capacitor, and the second part is just another amplification part. The tube is connected to a transformer, and this transformer will be connected to a speaker maybe. Actually I'm not sure if the output is powerful enough for a small speaker, so we'll see if we need an amplifier later when we make the tests. And the PCB needs two supplies. One is for 1.5 volts for the heating filaments of the tubes. These tubes are some old 2P tube and I was able to find some information about them. There are some pentodes and 1.5 volts is enough to heat up their filaments and make them work. There are some directly heated tubes and this is the pin connection. The other supply of the PCB is of around 9 volts and this is used for the rest of the circuit. The PCB also has a switch, so we could turn it on and off. And as I've told you before, we have two LEDs that will go below the tubes, and make them glow a color that you select. And this is not important. Ok, so let's assemble the PCB. Once you receive your boards, get together all the needed components. For the variable capacitor I have this one, but I'm not sure which pins to use. As you can see it has 9 pins, but we only need 2. 
so we need to find two pins with a capacitance of around 270 picofarads. So using my multimeter, I test the pairs of pins and I found these two with a capacitance of 300 picofarads. Ok, so for the regenerative coil I bought this one. And we've seen this type of coil on the teardown of the old black and white TV, which also has a radio integrated. And this is just a thread core cylinder with some copper coils on it. One big coil and a smaller one. And to find which is which, we can use once again the multimeter in resistance mode, and the smaller coil should have a lower resistance. And the rest are just passive components such as resistors, capacitors, a switch and a potentiometer. We also need this jack connector for the audio output. And for the amplification we need a small transformer like this one, with a ratio from 220 volts to 6 volts. And for the tubes it's better to use sockets than soldering them directly to the PCB. So we also need two of these sockets, and of course the tubes, which are 2P2. And for the supply we could use a 1.5V battery and a 9V battery. But to make sure I might use my power supply for the tests. And that's all we need, so let's assemble it. First we add all the passive components, the resistors, the capacitors and all that. And then I also add some red LEDs below where the tubes will go. And then I can also solder in place the tube sockets. Then I add the switch and the audio output jack. Now I can solder the regenerative coils. We have L1 and L2 and you must follow the polarity and not solder them backwards. The transformer will be exterior to the PCB, so we can only solder its wires. I'm not sure which wires are for 220 volts, so once again we check that with the multimeter and the low resistance is for 6 volts and the high resistance is for 220 volts. Then I also solder the variable capacitor. So now everything is soldered in place, but I haven't added tubes yet. I get one of these low power speakers. I solder some wires to it and add an audio jack. So now I can connect it to my PCB. And to the board I add 3 wires, for ground, 1.5V and 9V. Now I can add both tubes. And for now I supply only the 1.5V, and as you can see we have a consumption of around 130mA of current, so using this with a small battery it can last too long. And that's because the vacuum tubes hitting filaments are using a lot of current. For now everything seems to work. So now I can supply 9V as well from a different battery. And the circuit actually works. The volume is very very low, but it works. I place the microphone close to the speaker, and we can hear a random radio channel. Ok, so to get a higher volume, I want to add at the output the small PAM amplifier and check the results. The volume is now higher, but I have to say that the quality is not that good. Make sure that you check the description below, because I'll play some different configuration for such project. Because I also found one with 3 tubes. The first one is for the regenerative oscillation, and the second and the third tube are for amplifying the signal a few times. 
and you can also make different configurations for the coils in order to change the frequency range. And if you want to test the frequency range of our radio, you should place the capacitor on the lowest position. Then using a frequency generator, you can apply the signal to some sort of homemade coil and place that over the ferrite core. Then change the frequency till you hear the signal on the speaker. As you can see I get a peak at this frequency. And this will be the low range of the radio. Then you should put the capacitor on the highest position and do the same. So we find the high peak and write down the frequency values from your generator and that will be the frequency range. Also you can use an online calculator and find a good antenna size. For our frequency range we need a dipole antenna of around 10 meters in case that you want to listen to some faraway broadcast stations. You can also see how my body is affecting the amplitude of the signal when I touch the coils because my body is acting as an antenna. To improve this radio circuit, you can also use a multiple turns capacitor so we would have more precision, otherwise it would be very difficult to fine tune a specific radio channel using this capacitor. Anyway you have all that you need for this project below, my schematic, my PCB design, the part list and more information on electrons.com. If you like this project and you have learned something new, consider giving me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey, so one more video that ends, I hope that you like it. Okay, so listen, if you want to buy my merch, my t-shirts, you have the links below for my shop, and I promise that I will make more designs. And also, maybe you would comment below which one you like more and what more designs you would like to see, because in that way I could start designing them and post my new t-shirts. So thank you for all the support, and I'll see you in the next video.